Number 9. Patrick Murphy On February the 28th of 2019, Pennsylvania jeweler Patrick Murphy was stabbed to death at the Empress Hotel in the Treme section of New Orleans. 62-year-old Murphy, who ran a chain of successful stores, had traveled to the city with his wife to take part in Mardi Gras celebrations after having recently attended a jury convention in Arizona. His blood-covered body was found by a housekeeper in a room registered to 25-year-old Megan Hall. Video surveillance cameras showed Murphy and Hall arriving at the hotel together at 2.10 a.m. About an hour and a half later, the young woman was seen leaving the hotel room alone and briskly walking out the front door. The authorities later determined that Hall had fatally stabbed Murphy twice in the abdomen and once in the neck. She was arrested and initially charged with second-degree murder, armed robbery, and obstruction of justice. A charge of sexual battery was formally added in March of 2021, but the authorities didn't elaborate on how it pertained to the case. Hall faced a mandatory life sentence for the murder charge and up to 99 years on the other counts, but her trial was repeatedly delayed due to pandemic-related restrictions. As of the latest updates, it was set to commence in the spring of 2022. Hall was featured on the Netflix reality show Jailbirds New Orleans, and during the second episode, she briefly and vaguely touched upon the circumstances of her incarceration. The young woman reported that she'd come to the Mardi Gras carnival from Memphis and had been out drinking with two female friends when a situation occurred. Number 8. Siaya Jordan Whetstone on February the 19th of 2022, a student from the University of New Orleans was dropped off unresponsive at a local hospital. Roughly an hour later, 21-year-old Siaya Jordan Whetstone was pronounced dead, but the cause wasn't immediately clear. Police retraced the young woman's actions on the night through a series of testimonies. Whetstone had traveled to a suburb of Metairie to attend a pre-Mardi Gras carnival parade and had been out drinking with friends. Around midnight, she told one of them that she wanted to go to her apartment in Gentilly and check on her dog. Upon entering her residence, she was joined by her Uber driver, whom she'd reportedly presented as a newly met friend to roommate Reese White. The latter saw that Whetstone was intoxicated and suggested she remain home, but the student insisted that she had to go find her car and headed back out with the Uber driver. Around 1.30 p.m., she was called by her friend, Roberto Torres, who allegedly heard the driver in the background asking Whetstone, do you like to party? The young woman told Torres she would call him back but never did. Hours later, she was dropped off at the hospital by a private vehicle but the police didn't reveal if it was the Uber driver from the night before. Whetstone's family pressed the authorities for answers but the most recent updates on the young woman's passing came in late April of 2022. The coroner's office determined she'd had lethal doses of fentanyl and ethanol in her system, classifying her death as accidental. Her family suspected it had been due to a spiked drink. They threatened a lawsuit on the basis that no further information regarding the details of her death, particularly the extent of the Uber driver's involvement, had been offered. No arrests had been made and the New Orleans Police Department maintained that the case was an active and ongoing investigation. Number 7. Maurice Williams On Mardi Gras afternoon 2018, Louisiana Tech student Eddie Dingle and his family were watching the parade in the 2400 block of St. Charles Avenue in New Orleans. A fight broke out under unspecified circumstances between a woman who was with Dingle and another female parade goer from a neighboring group. According to information from an arrest warrant, 29-year-old Maurice Williams intervened to break up the fight. Dingle then brandished a gun from his waistband and shot Williams multiple times, killing him. 21-year-old Dingle surrendered to the authorities a few days later and was charged with second-degree murder. His lawyer argued that he'd acted in self-defense after the other group had attacked him and his family. The student had no prior convictions but had been arrested in the past for having a gun on school campus. Dingle was subsequently released on a $100,000 bond as he awaited his day in court. Number 6. Veronica Thura during Mardi Gras 2020, a Texas woman was arrested in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, after walking off with a dog she'd allegedly been considering adopting. 55-year-old Veronica Thura took the canine, a healer mix named Bonnie, during the Crew of Mutts parade. The dog had been under the supervision of the West Feliciana Animal Humane Society, who subsequently shared the story on Facebook seeking help from the public in locating her. Thora was arrested the following morning after she'd called 911 to complain that her car was being towed, but Bonnie was no longer with her when she was taken into custody. The dog was found that same morning near the Greyhound bus station in Baton Rouge. It was determined that Thora 
had abandoned Bonnie after walking off with her and she was booked into East Baton Rouge Parish Prison on account of theft of a dog. Number 5. 2020 Parade Float Accidents Within the span of a week in 2020, two people were fatally struck by Mardi Gras floats in separate incidents in New Orleans. On February the 19th, Geraldine Carmouche was run over and killed by a tandem float, a type of display in which a tractor pulls up to three or four connected elements. Witnesses reported that the 58-year-old was killed during the mystic crew of Nick's parade as she tried to cross a hitch holding two floats together. She tripped, fell underneath the second trailer and was crushed by it. Days later, on February the 22nd, an unnamed man was fatally struck by a tandem float during the crew of Endymion Parade, traditionally the largest parade of the season. As reported by the Times Picayune, the float was called Captain SS Eddie, which had also struck and killed an Endymion rider in 2008. In the aftermath of the latest fatal incidents, New Orleans Police Superintendent Sean Ferguson announced a ban on tandem floats for the remainder of the 2020 carnival season. Number 4. Brandon Bovane A tourist visiting New Orleans in 2022 was gunned down as he was in the process of checking into a hotel off Chef Mentor Highway. 33-year-old Brandon Bovane, along with his girlfriend and younger brother, had made a spur-of-the-moment decision to attend the Mardi Gras festivities. The trio were about to be handed their room keys but realized that they needed an app on Bovane's girlfriend's phone to complete their payment. Bovane went to retrieve it from their car, but as he searched for the device, people from two separate cars in the parking lot opened fire on each other. Bovane, who had no connection to the suspected gang-related conflict at the scene, was caught in the crossfire. The father of one died after being struck in the head by one of the stray bullets. His grieving brother subsequently told a media outlet that nobody expected it to be his last trip while reaffirming that Bovane had had nothing to do with whatever situation was unfolding in the parking lot. No arrests were made as of the most recent updates, but on March the 4th, investigators revealed they were looking for a newer model white SUV, possibly a Chevrolet Equinox, which had fled the scene in the moments that followed the shooting. Number 3. Peter Dabney and Ivan Williams on February the 2nd of 2015, as floats traveled along the St. Charles Avenue Mardi Gras parade route, teenager John Hicks gunned down Peter Dabney and Ivan Williams aged 21 and 22 respectively. Hicks was arrested after a police officer who'd been posted along the parade route chased the 19-year-old down and saw him disposing of his weapon into nearby bushes. The district attorney's office would later praise the officer's actions, maintaining that a case against Hicks would have been unsustainable without the gun. In spite of the incident occurring on a crowded street, none of the potential witnesses were reportedly willing to testify. An arrest warrant indicated that Hicks had confessed to the shooting, stating that he and his group were in a verbal altercation that turned physical with another group. He was ultimately sentenced to 45 years in prison following a plea deal in which he pleaded guilty to two counts of manslaughter. Today's topic was requested by Protect New Orleans, River Parish, and Kamakaya. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Tashanti Tony. On the night of March the 2nd of 2019, after the end of Mayan parade, Tashanti Tony lost control of his Chevrolet Camaro and crashed into nine cyclists on Esplanade Avenue, New Orleans. 32-year-old Tony, whom it would be determined had been intoxicated behind the wheel, sped through the bike lane at up to 80 miles per hour in an ill-fated attempt to pass slower traffic. He then plowed into the cyclists. Two of them, 27-year-old Cherie Walls and David Hines, aged 31, were killed while seven others sustained various injuries. In the immediate aftermath, Tony abandoned his vehicle and tried to flee, but was caught several blocks away. He was charged with 16 counts that included two of vehicular homicide with a blood alcohol concentration above 0.2%. During the ensuing court proceeding, which unfolded over the fall of 2019, he apologized to the victim's families and pleaded guilty as charged to all counts. He essentially threw himself at the mercy of Orleans Parish Criminal District Court Judge Laurie White, who consequently gave him the maximum sentence on every count. As per her decision, Tony would spend 30 years behind bars for each death, terms that would run consecutively to the 30 years and six months imprisonment for the seven people he'd injured and the six months for damaging other vehicles in 2021. An appeals court vacated the 91-year sentence describing it as the harshest in state history for a vehicular homicide case and arguing 
the White hadn't sufficiently articulated her reasons for it. Number one, Peter Latino. On February the 1st of 1970, bad weather had resulted in several Mardi Gras parades being postponed in New Orleans, but the crew of Carrollton members voted to proceed as planned. The weather initially cleared, but then as the parade made its way over the Jefferson Davis Parkway, it began to rain and the wind gradually intensified, reaching close to 70 miles per hour. A small tornado struck the Carrollton float, toppling it, and club president Peter Latino Cena was thrown from the overpass to the railroad tracks below. The man plummeted 35 feet and ultimately succumbed to his injuries. Within weeks, the city council released an ordinance which made it mandatory for float riders to wear safety belts, while also requiring that future inspections of floats be executed in a stricter manner. Thanks for watching. Would you rather have an annual festival in your honor or $100,000 in cash? Let us know in the comments section below.